So E3 is coming up again, and oh my goodness, this is looking like it's going to be a hot new thing. We got a bunch of new press conferences that are coming up, like the the, the Bethesda E3, which they like, like never have showed up, have they? And we got like a new PC a gaming hour or three hour thing that's just ridiculously long, and it's just like, wow. How did they get this much into whatever? What the heck are they going to even show? So, I figure it'd be pretty interesting if people wondered what I predicted was going to happen at this E3. Or rather, I thought that it'd be pretty cool. A anyway, first things first. Festa, uh, considering that they're, they are literally just like just doing this for E3, they're like, oh hey, we actually have enough games to announce or we have enough time to announce our games that we have out now. And currently with the uprising of... Uh, Fallout 4, the new, like, trailer, like, it's coming, like, please wait. That's just, like, showing a bunch of teases and whatnot. And while I've personally never been a big Bethesda fan, considering the fact that they actually are going to E3, I think they are honestly going to uh, announce two new IPs and a spinoff to uh, one of the recent games. It may be Fallout. I had no idea. It probably isn't, though, considering that they said it's Fallout 4. But I think that it's going to be really interesting what's going to happen with Bethesda, because it's just their first E3, so it could be like a total failure or it could be awesome. So that's going to be great. Next up, I believe Moneysoft is on there, on the table next. Um, personally, I think they're going to be the most hit and miss when it comes to E3. They always kind of have been, but it just really feels to me like they could either like totally win over this fan base now or they will just drop the ball. Because as far as I consider everything, the x is on his last legs. That is, that is as far as I am concerned. As a person that plays games, as, as a gamer themselves, I don't think Microsoft has enough uh, exclusives right now to actually be like, this is the reason to own an Xbox. It, it's not at all. I do think they will open up with Metal Gear Solid like 5 or another Call of Duty. They always tend to do that for some stupid reason. I don't know why. If they get smart, they'll open up with a better surprise, but I really doubt that. They never seem to stray away from that formula. But I do think they're gonna uh, put more conquer into this uh, into this uh, uh, E3. I think they will. I know they've shown a couple of trailers of it, of like you know, like it's Project Spark and it's Conquer. But I, I think they will uh, put some more thought into Conquer here. I don't think they're gonna announce any kind of like new Conquer game or like a spinoff or whatever like that. It's not gonna happen. Uh, they're just gonna show it or show like gameplay of it and go like, yeah, you know, see, it's Conquer still, but in Spark. This is what you could do in Spark. You can create your own games. Type of deal, like a, like a nice little show off. The other thing that I think will happen, and this is like a big, like, it will make it or break it, Banjo-Kazooie gets announced. Like, just straight off the bat, Banjo-Kazooie will get announced. I feel it in my bones. I feel it shaking and rattling in my head and going like, maybe I have to get an Xbox now. That would so suck. Because I really do not want to get an Xbox just to play Banjo-Kazooie. And you know how I, Microsoft could get me an Xbox? Banjo-Kazooie. That's, that's the reason why. And the only other thing that I can really think of, aside from everything else, price drop. That, uh, that is all I can really think of for the Expo and to really start like nailing things in the coffin and just be like, well, yeah, we are a console that you want. And I don't think they're at a good price range at all. I know they're going to be serving a, a quite a bit of a loss, and I know they're like, they're doing better than the Wii U in North America, but they're just awful in Japan. They are like the worst selling system in Japan. I think in all gaming, honestly, when in comparison to Japan, it's just ridiculously awful. And they really need to set something straight if they want to stay in that market, but it looks really bad for them. Now, on the other hand, if they do fail, I think they'll just continually showing shooters like Halo, Gears of War, uh, Call of Duty. And they'll just be like, oh yeah, this is why you should get an x -Bone, because you can stream games and do this and that. And they'll just kind of like trail off into things that people don't really necessarily want to be focused on they want to see games they don't want to see what can my expo do for me oh it can watch tv you know like they did in like the past two <laughs> e3s although not nearly as bad as the last e3 now nintendo i think i'm the most excited for i think it's the gonna be the most hype out of all of the convent all the e3 uh shows i just see it happening because there's they nailed it with the Nintendo Direct, and they just, like, pack up with a lot of amazingness to it. And I think they will probably start out strong by uh, announcing the Smash 4 DLC, 
like then then how they had that poll up to see like who do you want in Smash 4? And I think uh, they'll actually show Shantae and uh, the Inkling uh, as an opening. Like, like, oh no, who comes the new challenger type deal? I'll be like, Shantae, like, dances her way in, or the Inkling splat their way in. And I really feel like that's going to be a thing, that Smash 4 DLC is going to happen. You're going you're gonna to see that trailer, and that's how they're going to be opening with it. And if they don't open it in the beginning, they're definitely going to show it mid-show. I don't see this as, like, a last thing. Like, you usually want to end E3 on a hype. And I think they'll just put that mid tra mid trailer in to kind of just like keep the pace going, if they don't open it. Now another thing, I think they were going to announce another Metroid or F Zero. They will not announce both. That will not happen. I do not see that happening. That that feels like a complete utter pipe dream. But if we are to get one, it will be only one. It will not be the other. And a lot of people they're hoping for F Zero, and a lot of people they're hoping for Metroid. I it could go either way on a Slave to Marie. It just it could go either way and i think metroid is my prime candidate i think it will work really well as a 2d uh like thing but it, it could go back to 3d like in prime but i really do see like us getting another 2d metroid game like for like the 3ds or something like that that that'll be awesome and we're probably gonna see another trailer for shimigami tensin uh, x fire emblem we're probably gonna see one with actual gameplay and that'll be fun and nice to see but i think a lot of people are gonna be like Where's Zelda U? I want Zelda U E3. And either Zelda U has already been shown because it's going to be the very last game in the Nintendo World Championship because these ooh so heavily imply that it would. There's like, it's a secret to everybody. And it's like, you... I, I see what you're doing there. And I really see that happening where they just kind of like do a whole entire like Super Mario Brothers 3 type deal like with like the wizard and whatnot. And I think... I think it'll work really well if they do it that way. That'll be the most hype for everybody. They'll be like, oh my god, this is so great and amazing. I can't wait for E3. Um, but if they don't do that, if, if they do not do that, I see them announcing a Zelda U min like mini direct like they did with Splatoon and uh, Smash, I believe. Uh, I think they'll they'll do that considering how high people are for Zelda U and the fact that they're like, there's going to be no Zelda at E3. I definitely see that happening. Now, the other things I think will happen, uh, Nintendo will probably is going gonna, is gonna to probably uh, address the amiibo problem that they've been having. I don't think it'll be, like, part of the main direct, but I do think it's going to be part of, uh, like, that little round table that they always have, like, after E3. Um, I, I really see that happening because it's a very big problem, and Nintendo is losing money just by not addressing it nearly as well as they have. I mean, they have addressed it, but I think they will get more into that. As for everything else, I don't really see any kind of price drop for any of their newer products, but I do see them announcing the new original, uh, the new original 3DS. Like we're not gonna have the XL, just just the XL. We're gonna get the new 3DS, and we're gonna get the little little plates that you could put on it and customize your 3DS because a lot of people they want this. And they addressed it to Nintendo, and Nintendo is one to listen to their customers, and I really see them going like hey, we kind of messed up, we didn't realize you guys wanted the plates and whatnot, and they may just release the plates. That might be a thing that happens. But I see it more so that they're going to release the new Nintendo 3DS, and they're like, it's out in the western areas now. And I, that would be awesome. Next up is, e is EA. EA, I honestly, I never really look forward to. Uh, they always seem kind of mediocre at best. But having gotten recently into Mass Effect 4, uh, Mass Effect as a series, I definitely see them showing a Mass Effect 4 trailer. Like, legitimately just, like, it shows what Mass Effect 4 is about. Like, that's going to be something that will happen. I do think they are also going to open up with Star Wars Battlefront. That definitely seems like a thing that they would do. But the only other thing I could see that, that would really hype me up at their conference would be a Mirror's Edge 2 uh, trailer. I would just really like to see that happen and see just uh, gameplay with it. I think it will happen, honestly. I could, I could really see that. And I think it will be pretty uh, awesome to look at, especially with uh, the PS4 and Xbox graphics. But, like, eh. <laughs> Ubisoft. Prince of Persia. That, that's all I could really say. I do not think they released the Stick of Truth or, or Rayman uh, or... Anything else in particular that I'm, I'm interested in, I don't think that's going to happen. 
The only thing that I really see that, that could happen is another Prince of Persia game, because it's been such a long time, and they have a chance to, like, use the new tech for Prince of Persia. And that, uh, that's really all I see for it. Now, here's the other big contender, Sony. Sony is going to show off Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter 5. They, they are going to show that off so hard and be like look it's exclusive to the ps4 and everyone's gonna be like uh because street fighter 4 is already a broken mess as it is on the ps4 so not a lot of faith there but i definitely see them showing it off and going like no don't worry guys it's not broken it's just you know working out things and it's just uh, i don't think it's gonna happen well i don't think people are gonna receive it well but they're gonna show it off that's something that they definitely will do another thing i don't think they'll do is show a bunch of remasters like they're gonna they're gonna show so many remasters like gravity rush i think it's gonna be like the, one of the main ones that they're remastering i can see them remastering ratchet and clank on the ps4 uh jack and daxter on the ps4 uh there's a bunch of games like uncharted i'd see them remastering as well like there's gonna be a bunch of like remasters shown in like one trailer and be like look at all these games that are coming to the ps4 that you already own but on the ps4 and i'll just be like Sony, no, please. We don't want more remasters. We want more games. And Sony will just be like, eh? Eh? And it's just going to be awful. Just, just awful. But, Gravity Rush will be coming to the PS4. I think that's going to be something pretty interesting. I think it's, uh, it's also going to have a little Gravity Rush 2 announced, but I think that's more of a pipe dream for me than it is the actual reality. But considering that we haven't heard from Gravity Rush at all, and it being an amazing IP on the Vita that does not get any kind of, like, look at. I really see them doing that so they could actually start having more exclusives on the PS4. Other thing I see happening, Ratchet & Clank, the movie, the video game. I, I see that for sure. Like, I know it's supposed to be retelling of the first Ratchet & Clank game, but it really feels to me like they're going to make a movie video game just for the sake and the fact that they could sell it along there. Maybe it won't actually be addressing to any court, any towards the movie at all. Uh, I think they will, though, in some sort of weird way, like another retelling of Ratchet and Clank, like the whole entire remaster bits and whatnot. But it's just, it's going to be interesting to see, at least. The other things I really see happening are price drops for the Vita and PS4. I don't think the PS4 will get much price drops as it will get bundles, but the Vita is definitely going down on price. That's just going to happen. Uh, Sony doesn't care about the product whatsoever and they're probably like let's just milk it for what it's worth and that's it the store's already dropping uh vita products as it is it's even far worse off than the wii u is and it's just really sad because the vita is actually a pretty good system and the fact that sony has no faith in it and i don't see them really showing any kind of vita games on, on the vita unless it's an indie game and that's just an unfortunate thing that's going to happen and Square Enix, oh my goodness gracious almighty. Ooh, I have a bunch of wishlist things on here, but um, let's start off by saying that I think they're going to open with either Kingdom Hearts 3 or Final Fantasy 15. I see that being a reality. I see that being a thing that will definitely happen. Like we'll see Buzz or Woody or we'll see uh, the Frozen characters or, or Mulan even or, or uh, Lilo and Stitch. And it'll just be like Sorg like, and you know... They'll show that trailer and everyone will be like, oh my god! Uh, they could also go the other way around and show Final Fantasy XV. Um, I don't really see it happening, but it can. It's not like it, it can't happen. Um, in fact, that's probably going to be one of their main draws in for the Square Enix. I really, personally, I would hope that Kingdom Hearts 3 gets announced for the Wii U, but that's, that's a pipe dream. Uh, it's just going to be like PS4 Expo. <laughs> well, that's here or there. But the thing that I'm most excited for, and I think is going to be a legitimate thing, considering that there's like a, some sort of anniversary that's happening, Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest is going to get a bunch of announcements for the the West. Personally, my ideal situation would be that Dragon Quest VIII and Dragon Quest the the Warriors game gets announced for the West, and they they get uh they get a port along with Dragon Quest VII and Dragon Quest X. I don't see Dragon Quest X coming to the Wii U or the Wii because they're both kind of dead systems to, to Square. But I definitely see Dragon Quest X getting released on the PC. I, I can see that happening, no doubt. Dragon Quest VII, I personally, I want it to happen. I understand that it takes a lot of energy to to 
translate the bejeebus out of that game because it's like it's like a hundred hours long just the actual main campaign and that that excites me and terrifies me at the same time and i know they've done it before so they could kind of use that translation but honestly a lot of remakes don't do that they just like let's remake the whole entire dang thing and it's like please guys just report it <laughs> and who knows if that happens or not i i hope it does i do think Dragon Quest games are going to be announced for the West, but the most likely suspects are Dragon Quest VIII port for the 3DS and uh, Dragon Quest Warriors, because I don't see them having any faith in Nintendo anymore, and they just kind of like, well, just cash in on these little things. PC gaming, I have no idea what the hell this show is, and I frankly think it's going to be a big disappointment. I, I don't see them really getting a lot of uh, hype going for three hours. Then again, I've never been a big PC gamer, so that, that's probably the reason why. Other things that I personally would like to see uh, from like my wish list, <laughs> type dilly, Paper Mario Wii U. I would like to see that being a thing. That that sounds like a very fun, interesting thing to happen, but I don't think it will happen, unfortunately. Uh, I, there's not enough to warrant a Paper Mario Wii U, uh, aside from the fact that we haven't seen it. But knowing Nintendo, they, they have a tendency to just kind of not look at Paper Mario the way that they used to. Like, it's just kind of like a lost lover's gaze. But it's it's still up there. It's still possible. I could definitely see Bayonetta 3 also happening, but it, it's very unlikely considering that we've got Bayonetta 2 like two years ago. And it's just, it's unfortunate because I really like Bayonetta 3. Bayonetta 2. <laughs> and I would like Bayonetta 3, so... Aside from that, I don't, I don't see much else. I mean, or like even like care for much else. I think a lot of the things that I want or I predict, they're going to happen. Uh, they seem rather more spot on rather than idealistic aside from the, the ones that I just mentioned or or shouted out that I it was not I'm optimistic. Uh, Banjo-Kazooie is probably like the only other one. But aside from that, only other thing I probably would like in all honesty is Game Newell coming to the PC gaming show and he just like stands there for an hour he says absolutely nothing he just stares at the audience the whole entire time and then once once the like the hour is up suddenly we'll just like whisper like a little thing like his mic can barely hear him and he's like Half-Life 3 confirmed and everyone's like oh my god and the whole entire internet shouts and everything like that and I think that'd be the most hilarious thing to ever see in any kind of gaming show whatsoever because it's just so asinine, but I think that'd be one of the best things ever. Of course, the whole entire hour-long thing, I really doubt they're going to go for, but hey, it could work with five minutes. <laughs> Who knows? But that is my prediction for uh, E3 uh, 2015. Um, I think it's going to be really great. It, it actually happens on my birthday for the most part. So I'm very happy to see that. It's just, ooh. And I'm getting kind of jazzed up, and I always do. E3 um, has become some sort of ritual for me to just kind of, like, talk to my friends and just mess with it and whatnot. It's just it's a really fun time, and I hope all of you have a fun time, too. But, of course, you all will. There's a bunch of memes that come out of this dang thing, and it's just great. Well, tell me, you know, what, what do you think of my uh, little prediction list? Uh, if you think it totally sucks, uh... Try not to be too mean to me. Uh, if you think it totally rocks, praise me completely. I am a god. Thank you, thank you. Uh, aside from that, thank you for watching. Uh, or rather, listening, I should say. I'm pretty much going to put like a couple pictures here and there, and that's kind of it. But you guys will see that. And um, if you like all the things that I do and whatnot, go ahead and do things that people do when they do that, when they, when they like a video. Uh... And hopefully, uh, all your E3 wishes will come true. When you wish upon a star, makes no difference who you are.